Yeah, so good afternoon. Um, I'm uh, Stefan Bach, Johannes Knaut, and I, we are from OTH Amberg Weiden. Um, this is a small, rather small University of Applied Sciences, actually quite, quite close to Bayreuth. So we are neighbors in a way, um, and we are part of a um, project which is developing um, all kinds of uh, learning environments. Uh, the project is called IDEAL, which means um, Innovation Network for uh, Digital Adaptive Teaching, and uh, it is funded by the Stiftung Innovation in der Hochschullehre. And we uh, would like to um, tell you something and show you something about um, interactive self-learning modules for engineering math mathematics using the example uh, complex numbers. Um, with stack and JSX graph. So what are we going to um, talk about? Um, first, we want to um, give you a general idea about these interactive uh, learning modules. What, what are these? Then um, talk about why are we actually using JSX graph um, quite uh, frequently in these modules? Um, and then, Johannes will take over um, and we'll show you a bit more specifically how are we using JSX graph in, in um, these modules. So uh, when, when, when actually implementing uh, the efforts. And he'll also show an example about the end fruits of complex numbers. Um, and in the end, we'll uh, finish with a few challenges we uh, encounter in our project. <clears throat> yeah, interactive learning modules. Um, we are um, developing a self-learning course for central topics of introdu introductory mathematics, especially, especially for um, engineering programs, for example, um, electrical engineering or mechanics. And they are meant to be fle flexibly used by both lecturers and students and they include a variety of media elements, such as especially stack questions, JSX graph, and interactive video, which are um, symbolized here. Um, we um, do this because there are many students which don't really fit in the um, within the regular structure of classical lecture. So for example, in summer term, there's no mathematics one lecture being offered and students, um, ne never the nevertheless, they start in summer term and they need mathematics, mathematics one topics to, um, um, to follow mathematics two lectures. And this is actually why we started with complex numbers, because um, students need complex numbers for differential equations in summer term. And if they only start in summer term, they need um, this, um, this topic. Of course, it can also be used for exam preparation and repetition uh, for students who have um, children already and uh, have to be more flexible with their learning. Um, so it's not meant to replace classical lecture, but it's meant to um, fill gaps where classical lecture um, doesn't really work. We try to um, focus on a few very basic didactical guidelines. We'll be more specific later. So we want to... Um, at a very early point to cognitive, um, cognitively activate students. So we want to break up this division of knowledge acquisition on one hand and practice on the other hand. So you'll see there will be very early um, application or uh, always. And we um, of course want to um, have orientation to understanding. We want to give feedback at a very regular level um, because especially these student groups here, non-traditional students, for example, this is what they need. And they need a lot of feedback. And also we want to be adaptive with respect to these different needs. Um, so th th these are ideas of 
of the modules. Um, the, they are implemented as a Moodle course, or maybe in the, in the future, more than just one Moodle course. Um, and uh, I switch to the, uh, to the course um, briefly. And so you see, this is our Moodle course at the moment, and we have different media elements. So a few things about communication, forum, and also um, chat, uh, chat room down here. Then <clears throat> some um, material to organize the course, how to work with the course. And then this is maybe something like the heart of, of the module, um, interact, so-called interactive chapters. So this is um, where new content is being introduced. And interactive chapters, um, to make them interactive, we, we use um, Moodle quizzes, because there we can integrate stack questions, we can integrate interactive video and all these um, things, and of course, also JSX graph. So these are our five interactive chapters on complex numbers, and you see every um, chapter already has a um, JSX graph effort in the quiz description to give a glimpse of what is going to happen in this chapter. Yeah, these were basically these um, these two um, main bullets. Um, yeah, my next point: Why are we actually using JSX graph? and where in these modules. And I want to um, go over these rather theoret uh, theoretical points very quickly and um, to go back to the course um, as well. One very important point, of course, is to connect symbolical and graphic, and symbolic and graphical representation, which is very important in, in mathematics and didactic of mathematics. So, and there are two, two aspects to this. We want to um, visualize theory content. So we have the theorem, for example, and this needs either static figures or dynamic applets. Um, but we also use JSX graph inside of questions as part of the question. So to give information as part of the task, to use graphical input, or to give feedback to students. So on all three levels of stack questions. And yeah, in, in addition to this connection of symbolic and graphical uh, representation, of course, we want to provide a variety of opportunities for practice. This is very important for successful practice. And so we can use, yeah, as said, graphical input. Students can um, plot uh, and not only type symbolic expressions. Um, we also can give information in different in different representations. And as you've seen, we have these um, playful applets, which hopefully um, serve arousing interest and motivate students. Um, and I want to show you these three uh, or these these different goals and places of using JSX graph in, in one of these interactive chapters. So this chapter is um, on the nth roots um, of complex numbers. And as you see, here's already a little applet in the quiz description where you can get an idea um, where these, in this case, cubic roots are. Or you can also, of course, um, display um, fourth and fifth uh, roots and so on. And this is, this is only to, yeah, to have a glimpse of what's going on. And then in the chapter itself, I only talk about the beginning because otherwise it, uh, it will take too long. There's a short introductory video um, where something is, is taught, uh, where, where um, he talks about the, the problems of taking nth roots within the real numbers. And you have to um, distinguish all these different cases and it's really uh, not very nice. Um, and then there is um, a short definition what, uh, what the nth root of a complex, complex number is meant to be. And then 
um, a geometrical proposition that the n n roots are um, uh, shaping a regular polygon in the complex plane. So we start geometric. And then, of course, this is a good place to come up with this applet again, which is the, uh, the, the graphic graphical reference, representation of, <clears throat> of this proposition here. And then students can, of course, move this complex number around and also um, vary the index and uh, by this um, taking other roots and also they can only move um, Z uh, in a tangential way and then leave the, the absolute value a constant. But still the, the dangerous what will student or the, the question is what will students do with this applet? Maybe they will actually only play around and they they won't really think about it and they won't use it to connect this proposition and the applet. And that's why we continue with a stack question where they have to use the applet. Um, so this stack question, um, it says uh, that they should use the applet to determine the two square roots of two, um, two times i. So that means they have to find two times i up here and then um, move the index to two. And then they see, oh, the two square roots of two times i are one plus i and um, minus one minus i. And then they can check and see that this is correct already. And then they can go on and also determine the three cubic roots of um, uh, z equals minus one. Um, and then <clears throat> they'll actually go on and plot complex numbers in the next task. So, um, but you see, we, we try to make the, the, the applet being used in a meaningful way. And this is where I uh, pass to Johannes because this is actually his first point, I think. Yeah, um, you have to um, give me the screen. Thank you. Okay. Um... <laughs> At first, um, thank you very much, um, Alfred and Carsten, for the opportunity to talk here. And um, I want to shortly introduce myself. Um, my name is Johannes Knaut, and I'm a co-worker of Stefan Bach at the OTH Hamburg Weiden. And I'm using Stack and JSX Graph uh, almost on a daily basis. Yeah. So um, now I want to continue here with the, our design criteria of how we are using um, JSX Graph. And um, uh, at first, um, what we want to um, generally uh, achieve is um, to make the use of the JSX graph applets more binding. Another word is mandatory, but maybe that's a bit too strict, the word. Um, we want to avoid that the student just skips over an applet and um, also that he's left alone with it. And um, how we can achieve this is, um, for example, by giving clear assignments for an applet. Um, we do this um, um, at every place where we use an applet, actually. Um, another um, um, way to achieve this is um, uh, restricted access. Um, that means that um, the student um, can't use some elements or content if he doesn't um, use the um, applet first. Um, and I can show that um, shortly. Um, so here, for example, um, 
we have a vector animation and um, here's an option um, to move these vectors freely but it's uh, disabled uh, the, at the start and the student has to um, start the animation first and um, work and think about the animation first before he can use the other mode um, and freely um, uh, move these um, vectors. Um, this is one um, way of restricting access. Another, uh, another example would be in a, in a stack question um, where you only um, 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 give the second part of the exercise if the first part was correctly answered. Um, and so the student um, has to um, use the applet. So um, then, of course, in stack questions, um, when you have uh, automatic evaluation and feedback and get points and feedback um, for your answer, then um, um, students will also be more um, bound to use um, the applet um, in the way that it's meant. Um, then um, we also try to closely link um, different media elements um, with each other. Um, here, um, I also have a short example, um, the same video from before um, at a later time. Um, there, um, the lecturer uh, has drawn a graph and um, has input here um, one um, um, complex vector. And then um, after this video, there's, um, there's the JSX graph applet um, where um, we can um, yeah, manipulate the same graph. And um, so the student is really um, urged to, or um, it is encouraged to, to use the graph. Um, then um, uh, design criteria from the didactical perspective, um, um, we want to enable uh, discovery learning. So for example, um, the student can um, move points freely. Um, he can um, use the navigation bar, zoom out, um, and um, start the animation as often as he likes to. For example, then um, we want to um, um, add or remove um, symbolic presentation representations from the graph. Here we we have um, a symbolic um, representation of the um, vector addition, um, which is um, synchronized with the um, graphical uh, representation and. Um, this is one thing that we sometimes want, um, just that the, the student can link those representations. Then we want to stimulate uh, meaningful learning strategies. Um, uh, we will see this in the next example, um, just provide uh, different strategies to do the same thing. Um, then there's design criteria um, from the media didactics and usability side. Um, what we often want to do is um, reduce um, extraneous processing, for example, um, by using the spatial contiguity example. So we have here um, the symbolic representation very near um, to the graphical representation. Um, we could use this a box uh, also outside of the graph, but inside of the graph, it's just nearer um, and it's easier to link those representations. And um, then um, the coherence principle, so is something like um, we only have here the one ticks um, and we, we don't show other um, labels because it's just um, uh, not relevant here. Um, so we want to reduce a cognitive load. Um, yeah. Then um, from a usability standpoint, we, we often have input and usage instructions also to reduce cognitive load and to make the first contact with an applet um, easier. And we, we want to use, uh, we want to design our elements consistently 
such that um, um, students just know, okay, I used this um, element before, I know how to use it the next time. Um, now, um, I want to go in uh, another example um, here um, about uh, the nth uh, complex root of a complex number. And um, in this um, example, well, we see, we see here a tooltip, which um, gives um, uh, also, um, yeah, um, is an example for the spatial contiguity. Um, we have um, here a hint um, um, for the exercise. And what we have to do here is um, finding three different third roots of, of this complex number. And the student at first um, here has to um, um, compute the numbers uh, in a symbolic uh, representation. And um, and we see that we have a part A and a part B, but the part B is, is blurred, um, it's restricted. So we have to uh, answer this first question um, first, and then um, we have access to the next part where we have the, um, um, the graphical representation um, of, um, yeah, of the complex uh, roots. And we have to um, now um, here um, um, draw them um, with the right, um, um, with the correct angle and the correct uh, length. And what um, we see here, um, or what we did here, we, we gave the student different modes. So um, we have here um, a button where we can um, yeah, switch between different modes. And here in the second mode, we can just um, uh, manipulate the, um, the angle. And so this could be one strategy to first um, uh, manipulate only the the angles uh, of the um, of the um, of the vectors, and then um, the um, in the other mode the um, the length of the vectors, such that the the length should be five, and um, the the angles. Um, should be um, 17, um, 173, and um, here 103. And it's usually easier than that, but I'm a bit uh, nervous. <laughs> and um, so what is shown here, the, the student can, um, um, at first in this exercise, um, he has to um, solve the task on the symbolic um, side. And uh, then uh, in the second part, he, um, yeah, he can um, use the graphical representation and has um, the opportunity to um, use different strategies in inputting um, vectors. Now, if I am I'm checking this answer, um, if everything is correct, I can um, I can show the um, the equilateral triangle, um, which is consistent in a consistent design like the material before, and um, the student um, can still um, switch between representations and um, yeah he. Um, um, has here the, um, um, the his own choice to um, select um, the triangle, and um, he, yeah, um, and he can focus on the graphical representation in the in the second task. So um, I want to go back um, to the um, to the slides now. Um, I want to report about some challenges in um, designing um, um, our course and our exercises. Um, so 
there are some trade-offs um, to make. Um, so we have, um, we want um, the student to develop his own uh, learning strategies and um, want to, um, yeah, um, have a free use, but also have a kind of mandatory use to to avoid uh, that students skip over applets or use them in a wrong way. So this is a trade-off to make. Um, you have to decide for um, something. Then um, we want to be consistent throughout the course um, in order to make it more easier um, to use. Um, but sometimes we also want to optimize a single app applet. Um, and so consistent consistency is um, hindered sometimes. Um, then um, we want to have, it's, it's, it's good to have many user usability elements like, for example, uh, um, zooming, um, having the full screen, and so on. Um, but sometimes it uh, can direct the focus away from the task and we have to um, decide, okay, is it um, here worth to have this usability? But maybe um, um, when we do this, um, the student has too much cognitive uh, load. Um, um, and then also, um, a challenge with um, um, usability versus task difficulty. So um, we often use um, snap to grid or um, attractors, um, but um, sometimes this also can um, reveal information about uh, possible solutions. Like um, if you have a snap to grid of one in an exercise, then um, um, students will no, okay, uh, they don't have to be too exact, maybe. And um, so this is always a trade-off. Also, for example, to illustrate this, um, we always give an initial bounding box, which is uh, which, which makes sense, but maybe on a piece of paper, the student um, would have to uh, extract information from the task first and uh, kind of navigate himself, yeah. And um, so, um, so I'm at the end of um, of our talk now, and uh, thank you very much for the attention. And um, feel free to ask questions. <laughs>